First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything, any amendments to the agenda? Or anything? I do. Um, I have an email today um, that Thatcher Hinman is possibly looking for $2,000 to be earmarked out of the rec fund for his grant. He's writing a trails grant and he calculated the match wrong. So I'm not sure, I haven't got a response email from him, so I don't know if he's going to just reduce the amount of his ask in the grant or not. I mean, the money's in there, but to spend capital funds, you need select board approval. So um, I told him I would ask about it tonight just in case. Okay, well, we'll just bring it up another business. Yep, that's fine. I'll make a note. Yep. Okay, anything else? Nope. Hearing none. I move. Um, actually, I, I just wanted to uh, quickly add an executive session at the end. I don't have all the fancy uh, code put in there, but um, in regards to um, town personnel. Okay. I move we accept the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then public comment inquiry. If there's anything that is not on the agenda this evening that anyone would like to bring up, now now would be the time to do it. Lisa, you have anything? Mm -hmm. anything? <laughs> <laughs> comment? It was something. But it's gone now. We'll have to wait it's gone now, time. huh? <laughs> you missed it. All right, so here and done, we'll move on. Uh, first on the agenda was to award the bid um, uh, for the new uh, apparatuses for the uh, fire equipment. And uh, I believe everybody got the copy of the quote. They had to get three for the, um, or they got three, they, didn't have, they got three responses. So <coughs> Gary and I met, and this is the one as you can see that he approved. This has the type that they want to move forward with, and so. I guess the only um, question I had didn't really matter too much, but I just couldn't remember what the, the amount of the grant was with the, with the portion that we were was the total oh, for some reason I was thinking the total was 120,000 but I, I well, went back yeah, I couldn't because find then our match that. was higher so um, then we would have had a match on top of that so it might have been it might have been 128 and then our match would, so we were within the, so, so we're within yeah within oh, yeah. the budget yeah, okay. yeah. Know, they don't mm -hmm. have any extra yeah okay well I just couldn't remember what the number was yeah. was I'm assuming that because it wasn't brought up that it was 100. right exactly yeah. yeah no we're good okay any any further discussion in regards to the we bid? No. And it moved it, to yep, sir. And it seemed like it was um, choice of fire chief, so I'll give you the opportunity to make a motion. All right. I move to accept the bid from Lake City Fire Equipment. Do you need the amount in there? Yeah? Yeah, we probably should. For one hundred and thirty three thousand. $858. You got it. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. <clears throat> did they happen to say how long it would take before they would get the new equipment or? I don't, I don't, I didn't ask. Um, Gary may have told me during the conversation, but it's a while. Because they have to get it and then I think they have to all get fit tested. For yeah, the exactly. So they fit test the mask, but they still have to order the tank. So it'll be a while until they get it. But, I'm sorry. But. Okay. Right. Well, good. Well, it's good that we were able to take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. And he's well, writing Andy another one for, for the um, compressor, you know, to fill it. So for the compressor and the fill, okay. that, that one's going in next. So he's right. feeling good about it, which would be great. It's yeah. good money, big money. And the other one we have is a... Um, Next up is the ordinance in regards to the regulation of control of garbage and trash and litter and solid waste. Um, at the last meeting we had 
the board had made the recommendation to cut out the um, cut out the um, you know vehicles and mobile homes and um, end, end of it and, and stick with the um, trash solid waste um, and did anybody have any any questions or any comments in regards to the new draft? Uh, <clears throat> other than uh, I think we may have gone too far, but with the garbage, we did a good job. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Dietrich wrote it, but uh, yeah. about being very careful to talk about garbage and what it does, mm -hmm. about the attraction of rodents and smells and all that stuff and being a detriment to your property and your neighbors. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that mm -hmm. got some teeth in it. So this will go, um, I drafted the warning for the town meeting warning this weekend. And um, so in order to do this, we have to put in like a paragraph synopsis and then you post in the warning where, you know, it's available, full copies, etc. cetera. So, um, but no, Dietrich did a great job. So. We did take out the things that you wanted, uh, construction waste, and there was a few things that we'd eliminated from the last discussion. But I guess the only um, question that I had that I wanted to bring up was reading through it, and I read it twice, and I read it once, and then had a question, read it again, and I didn't see the answer to my question here, so okay. I might have missed it, but um, being that we have to conform with the composting laws, um, there is some slight wordage in here about or on what page or, or approved by well it's not in here so I was oh okay should we put some so we should we put two things I guess one would be should we put a definition for composting you know uh, private composting whatever we're gonna call it I don't call it facility or Recept box or receptacle yeah and then yeah. and then should we add should we add something into the duties of law and orders? Because one, it's going to be law, so we have to do it. Right. Um, the only thing I could see in here, it just said, because um, when it's talking about the accumulation of garbage and litter, and um, there is a little bit of teeth in here, um, except uh, does not apply to an area designated or approved by the town of Bethel as a permitted disposal site. So. Mm -hmm. I guess at that point, would we be saying that the town of Bethel is already saying that a landowner's composting area is already an approved spot, or should we have something in here? Most people are already composting on their own if, where they can, right. and if not, there's receptacles down to the solid waste facility for that. Right. But I could just see that coming up as, yeah. you know. Well, where I are mean, you seeing that portion, Chris? The one uh, you're talking about. Well, I, I, there's nothing about composting in here at all. No, that part I got. But section looking under section two B, two B garbage mm -hmm. storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it goes in there about you know the normal garbage and basically saying that needs to be identified in a proper, yep, it does. approved town of Bethel mm -hmm. site or as permitted. Um, so I didn't know if if maybe the wordage that we already have in here by saying or a town of Bethel approved site, that would be a composting box in your yard for that already be an approved site? Or, or should we actually put something in there because... It actually it says uh, outside of the proper garbage receptacle. Because mm. like my idea of composting is probably a little bit different than... Mine too. You know, I guess my idea is kind of the old, you know, you got, you know, your wood composting box that, you know, like you used to grow potatoes and, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, vertical box that you would compost in, but someone could someone could completely take that as right. putting a big pile of compost right. in a yard, you know. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I guess you could see it a couple of ways, right? Because if we don't touch on composting, then it means where it's excluded from the ordinance, so people can compost mm -hmm. as they see fit, or you could define composting, and I mean. I think it's a stretch. I'm trying to remember what the state law says about composting. Um, well, so if, if, let's just go with the idea that if somebody has 
compostable materials, but they're not in a designated area that's specific, that becomes what we're classifying here as garbage or trash, mm -hmm. right? Well, because they're the not. Well, in the very first draft, there was leaves, there was right. um, scraps. In, in the very, very yeah, first sure. draft I presented to you, and you wanted that taken out. So, That's right. um, so we took it out, but I, mean, I don't mind defining what compost is, but I, I think maybe the, the state law is already going to define what that it's looks true. like. It's true. That it right. is. Well, I just didn't know if, if there's already a little bit of verbiage in under the section 2B. You know, that does give a little bit of leeway. Right. You know, because I so guess you could, I guess at the end of the day, you could say that's an approved town of Bethel disposal site, right? Well, because they're but, saying it's a long term mm -hmm. storage accumulation of garbage, trash, or solid waste. So we're not including compost because it's not defined as any of those things. And it's hard for us to say where on someone's property they're going to put their compost pile. I mean, we're hoping that they're mm -hmm. not just doing it out in the open. That you're hoping that they're, you know what I mean, well, that they have an actual composting container, although some people build their own or... So if we put in excluding compost, um, some kind of verbiage, excluding household compost uh, site or something well, along I just, I, I guess the way I was seeing it is that. one of two things. Either we move compost in here and define it, like uh -huh. composting definition and and then have something in here about an approved composting, you know, as like a town or that something. That or that's a huge can of worm, though. Yeah. Well, so I've or seen fifty different containers that are approved <laughs> compost. Or, no, no, or or we could add section two E, let's say, and it could just write the statute of, you know, the statute that has to do with the composting okay. law. I'm not sure anyway. what the uh, the state statute is on composting, that it takes effect this July if they don't kick it out, but I'm not sure of that wording. But it's July 2020, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. So, I mean, they've or, got it spelled out in there. I, I, I don't know what the actual right. verbiage is. So I don't know. It, I mean, it might be easiest to just... To just add a letter. And you could add a letter or and you could say reference to the state excludes, composting law. You know, it either excludes composting right. or we can define, or you can add in reference to state statute on compost. Yeah. I think probably safest to go with the state statute because that's the default. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think we should have something in there about the All compost right. just so. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll make it easy. I mean, again, that, that's a tough thing with setting ordinances, so right? So making I mean, compost okay and encouraged to do right. versus it being considered a nuisance. Right. It, you know. Per state statute. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's the tough thing with doing the ordinances, like we talked about the last one, is, you know, based upon what the board and the town manager today feels, you know, we're kind of all on the same page, but, you know, March, it could be a board that's slightly different, you know, Therese could take a different job next year, and then it becomes a different definition of what this is, you know? She can't take a different job next year. Yeah, so we can <laughs> you know, do, uh, oh, maybe we should, and we should, but you define, know what I mean? It, we should uh, define compost right. then. Something. So I say we yeah. put a definition of compost under, as 11, and then E would be the compost reference the statute that takes effect in 2020. So. Yeah, uh, other than that, I thought it, it was really good. Mm. And I liked how you handled the junkyards. That was a yeah. good way of doing it. I'm not sure if many people know that we can take it to the dump too. Like there is a place to bring compost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. well, we can. Uh, that can be. I can, I can put add, that yeah. wordage in there as well. You can also ask um, Kelly to put something on Facebook and um, the website just to let people know that. Um, it could just be a challenge because, uh, again, the reason why we're having to go forward with this is because there are a small number of, you know, property owners that haven't been as responsible as others, right? So that very well could be the same as composting, right? I mean, someone could just have a pile in their yard and then it tracks, you know, varmint and you could be in the same situation, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so but it's not defined in a bag, out. you know? Put something out on Facebook and stuff just to remind people that um, they can take food scraps to the dump currently for, for the transfer station currently for free. I It'll think, be right? free to start, anyways. Free, right, Mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But, I mean, again, people are going to store it somehow at their house because they're not going to want to go to the dump 
Mm. Once a week. Once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, Maybe yeah. some will, but. Then a simple statement can also be, you know, respectful storage of, respectful whatever. I can, can't think of this time of night, but, you know, mm. just one phrase that says, you know, be mindful of this as much as you are mindful of all the other definitions or. And I think if we just refer to the yeah. refer to the state statute, mm -hmm. I think it'll be fine. So once you do that, we're good. So I'll mm -hmm. I'll move forward with <coughs> adding the warning and coming up with a little synopsis for that. But we'll put it back in your packet for next time too. So. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion on? There's nothing else in the ordinance for John Paris. We took it out because of the meeting last time. There was a couple people here so um, that were opposed to that. So that came out, and so we're focusing just on trash. Um, currently, there's not much in the zoning regulations or the bylaws, but maybe that's where we'll look at and the zoning regulations are done um, or redone. We might attempt to tackle it through there, and then it's by zone. And you know that what constitutes a junk here? There, there's well, a state statute. The state that finds that. Yeah. Four cars, 90 days. So for the most part, the, the feedback that we had gotten, well, the only feedback that we had gotten, but it was on a small scale, had to do with not just cars, but people's property. So that would be if someone think, you know, has a bathtub in the yard that has flowers in it, or something, you know, um, that type of stuff. And that was kind of the biggest feedback that we right. got. Of course, automobiles and mobile homes and trailers and things are more seen. Um, but yeah. but so. the, the important thing was, you know, the initial <coughs> issue was was um, you know solid waste, trash. Um, so we we had dialed it back to to make sure that we didn't want to get in a position where it gets voted down and then springtime comes and we're having some of the same issues and we can't enforce anything. So um, hopefully this way of having it watered down, but it's just trash related that. That'll address the majority of the complaints that, <clears throat> that we're getting. It's also a working document that can be, yeah. work can be changed. Yeah, I think if we, we went on, I think we went a little far yeah. with. And we had also talked about that the, the, you know, the bylaws will be coming back around here in another two years, right? Something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> usually that's when some things like, the quote unquote junkyards or yeah. things like that yeah. come around um, yeah. to be de redefined if possible. So. Yeah. And then you can do it by, um, you know, zone. So I, I, I'm going to the Planning Commission meeting Wednesday, so we'll see yeah. where, where we're at. Okay. Things. And they're coming to next right. agenda, to, or next agenda to the uh, 20 something to update you on what's happening here, too. Yeah. Right. Any further discussion? So we'll see another another version of this with the well, additional. Well, it's going to go in the packet, but I, um, I there's enough now that if long as you're happy with the majority of it, I can make the um, synopsis for the warning. So because I put that timeline in your packet, so we'll throw it in next time. But because um, you're only going to be able to tweak it one more time before it goes to the right. voters. All right. All right, class four highway policy. So along with that, I did put in um, a copy of Derek Wright's uh, letter about the class four road, basically encouraging you to do some maintenance to class four roads. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I guess my opinion, I ran, I, read through the class four policy and I I also was able to uh, look up a couple other municipalities um, through website to look at their class four road policies and they're <clears throat> very similar to what we're proposing here you know that one might have just a little different version but you know um, the point is still the same um, I, and all I wanted to throw out was through researching it a little bit, <clears throat> the only thing I did see that there was a couple of um, rural towns kind of similar to Bethel, like larger, just as rural, but you know, maybe bigger, but um, that I did see some wordage that they had in theirs was 
they did um, they did reference um, some basic maintenance um, which included um, things like rough grading or greater ditching of the road mm -hmm. but they then also put some language in there about you know basically as a you know uh, if time allows uh, or on a first come first serve basis type thing so it wouldn't necessarily say that every class four road is going to get rough graded every year in greater ditch but it, you know if there was an issue on a certain class four road mm -hmm. it would allow the town's personnel to okay well we're going to be up that way next week we'll we'll rough grade it for you or we'll cut a greater ditch and we'll leave but it wasn't there was no like adding materials of like stone right. or pipe or well i think it's kind like of that, covered in section 2a when we say yeah, the extent so required by necessity a. staff and financial resources allow i mean i think mm -hmm. if we just told alan look if you're up there and that road hasn't been graded in a while go ahead you know right. and kind of left it to him to the only real change i've made was to this one versus the last draft was taking out some language because you don't want to penalize someone who's been a good steward of the road and I don't need someone to call me every single time they're gonna drive on the road either so we kind of backed it down so it was a little bit manageable for the people that use it and us but um, so without getting too specific Chris I think you could cover it in that I could just let right. Alan know that was the only other thing that I saw that some towns had in there. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. they do. And um, I can tell some towns we had read looked like they maybe they had issues with this because they were mm -hmm. some, like Rochester was extremely specific and mm -hmm. had a lot of verbiage to it. So we assumed they had some issues, but. So when, um, I'm not familiar with the process, but so if somebody does live on a class four road and they come into the town manager's office to get a quote unquote permit, mm -hmm. is, is there any charge for the permit or is it free or how? I have to look at your fee schedule, but I don't think, and only right now, I think the only thing people are playing okay. for is a curb cut. Because I would just, I would just say, if we're going to put the, you know, if if someone living on a class four road wants to, you know, bless their heart, put some gravel on the road and grade yeah. it, then we shouldn't be charging them. No, there wasn't a fee on the highway. Yeah, I didn't know if that was something calls. we had in there, but no, just for the curb cut, curb and that's cut. only if it's a new addition. Okay. No, and we have given some people like some culvert like pieces if they weren't going to be using town um, wasn't using it or kind of a secondary you know culvert situation sometimes they would okay mm -hmm. give um you know we've done that but no we're not charging anybody no i just didn't know i know we passed the new fee schedule a yeah, year ago and i couldn't just remember the curb cut that. so that if someone wanted a new driveway access i do think that some of the Cross four roads should be posted in the spring for mm -hmm. no motor people. Yeah, Alan and AJ are attending a class in February in Randolph, all about that that the DMV is sponsoring about posting and all that sort of stuff. So they're actually um, going to that in February. Because there's a lot of a lot of these roads that are not passable now because people were allowed to get in there in the spring and tear mm -hmm. them up. Yeah, no, it's true. I think that's it. Somebody, no, they see the mud pile and want to go cheap in or whatever. You can actually gate the class four road up on top of the mountain. Yep, you can. The select board has the right to gate the tent. I don't know if it's a tent or a class four. No, I mean that you can close class four. The select board can. They did it here. Big steel gate there. Didn't we do one up on off of Macintosh? I think we did. Could be. Back, back I don't up. know about that one. I think there. we did. Uh, they, were, they were going in there. Carl was involved in going in there. Mm -hmm. Doing some work up in there. Well, it says in here that it's a logging operations that they should notify the, the town foreman about uh, being in there. Yeah. I did see that in there. Yeah, that was one of the issues we had. Yeah. Does a landowner need permission from the town to work on a mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, in this policy they will. Any person who wishes to perform or arrange for the improvement, restoration, or installation. So not, gen you know, so yeah, they would if it's, um, they just need to get a permit from myself or the designated. For repairs, maintenance, improvements, restoration, or installation, um, just tells how we will authorize it. So um, yes, they will. And, and some of that's really for the, um, you know, I just let's just say, for instance, the landowner wanted to put a 
culvert, let's say, in a road. Um, you know, because there could be there could be effects on the discharge of water from that culvert. You know, let's say in the past the water the water crossed in a different location, and now you put a culvert and the water crosses and it could spill out into you know neighbor yard or you know, or, or or affect another roadway down um, you know down from that. So that's um, you know a lot of times it's just a more of a keeping track of who's doing what out there, not really. Uh, necessarily policing that you're going out there. I wouldn't think it would grade. really necessarily be like a farmer getting rid of some rats back dragging with the bucket. I don't see where that would be a problem. But. No, I, it's just you know that's why I always just wanted to make sure that the, they call for a permit, but it really it's kind of a yeah a verbal discussion of you know next next month I'm gonna do a little bit of grading down my road or, or I'm gonna. I'm going to knock all the stone walls in to fill in a hole. Or something. Just, just so that we kind of know what's going on up there. So if we get a question or call. Um, we do have to be careful because there are different um, uh, storm water type permitting um, things that are going on in the state of Vermont now with storm water discharges. So we have to be careful of those two. Does anybody on the board or... The audience have any questions in regards to the current policy? Does anybody, have, well, anybody that's here for it, if have a chance to read it or look at it? No. And like I said, I, I I read it and then I pulled up a couple online that I can see from different towns. Uh, one happened to be the town of New Haven, which is kind of rural like us. They have a lot more people, but um, you know. It was kind of similar, other than they did spell it out about about some um, I don't know, basic maintenance or something. They labeled it. it. Just gave the um, the town the option to go in, go out there if they need to. You had a class four policy before now. Yeah. yeah. How is this? Is this different from that a lot? What what have we? You didn't have a class well, we, four policy before. We've always had um, kind of a working, well, I guess we haven't had an official We had the policy. highway access yeah. policy that Ma when those I signed in the 80s. Yeah. So there was never anything in the I don't think was there as far as no. the policy. Not that I'm aware of, not that I've seen. I haven't found one. Um, it doesn't mean there wasn't one, but I haven't seen it. They, they did have a highway access policy. And you've read this too, right, Rick? Yeah, you've read it. And. Um, I think the biggest concern was just for some people was just the fact that you know they they still think the town should do some maintenance on class four roads and not just leave mm -hmm. them so well and right now mostly that mechanism would be if a landowner called to complain about a spot on a class four road right we'd go look at it or if the crew's already up there right that's the mechanism that would trigger right but i think basically the policy was really doing was because the select board doesn't want to update upgrade bridges or culverts on class four roads so that was kind of where the mm -hmm. impetus of the policy came in gotcha. and um so since it's in a draft what we'll, i'll do is i can i'll add it to the next agenda for signatures i just wasn't sure where it was going to go tonight so i didn't give you a copy without draft on it. I read it is there's no requirement for us to maintain or repair a class four road today if we don't have time or the finances. Right. And that's, right. right. And that's state. And the concern I have with that is uh, the road above their house that goes to Randolph. Mm -hmm. I used to go through there with my pickup truck with a little wood in it. Yeah. You can get through there with a four wheeler now. I'm no Maybe problem. a dirt bike. Maybe. I mean, I guess the the only concern I see on that is just you know if you have a class four road and let's say let's say there's two property owners that live on the class four road but it does does empty into another road and people do use it as a let's say a through road or cut off road or something. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know there is it really isn't fair if they're if if they do spend some time maintenance that road and others are traveling on that. You know, but again, I mean, how do you police that? I mean, you're not going to sit there and 
you know, ticket everybody that goes on the class four road. But no, um, it's just, and that's why you know we're encouraging um, that Alan's going to go to the class. That way we can put signage up and at least get them signed. Mm -hmm. So whether or not people ignore them, that's what they'll do. But if someone calls and with a plate number or something because mm -hmm. somebody had gone up and torn up a road, we could certainly kick but, that over to the constable. But Mo kind of hit it on the head. I mean, I would say. Um, you know, from my experience, a, a majority of the um, damage that happens to the class four roads happen in the springtime, yep. and they happen with individuals that have some recreational vehicles. Um, so, some of it happened though um, with the flooding. Um, sure. Yeah. And like on that flooding, our class four roads were really vital to us when we had the iron mm -hmm. uh, and so. I think a little bit of maintenance, like you said, driving the grader every now and then. Like he said, you could drive through there in your pickup truck, and that was a good road. Um, and that was Irene that wrecked a lot of it. Um, mm -hmm. But everybody uses them with their four wheelers to get medical equipment around. Um, so they are very valuable to our town and, commu and community. Um, so it's kind of hard to you know, blame it all on the four wheelers because I, you know, a lot of that real flooding trash, um, some of them, and I'm pretty sure um, in the rules before the town was required to fix up some of the roads. Um, I don't, just don't know if areas, like you said, if it was convenient at the time to work through some of them because some of them maybe should be a little work done for emergency situations. Um, and that would be, you know, like, like he said, that one road going through the school use it for hiking and things like that. It's kind of a, uh, you know, just for emergency situations, we need to look at those roads and, and that, that way. And we, we I think they're all passable. I, don't, I mean, at least. Well, we have a class four to, road to, to committee too, so. Apparently. Um, well, that's I, mean, I was going to ask I about. Was on it. I mean, I guess one right. one thing that we could task the committee with is maybe identifying <clears throat> certain class four roads that may may be a lifeline on a potential event, or if they're out there documenting the fourth class roads like they should be doing, uh, there's an opportunity them for if, if there is something that needs to be done that may only take a small amount of time so they for could the road crew to inventory do. Inventory them and then kind of yeah. report as to what the status is. I mean, I don't, I don't see us wanting to go out there no. overnight and hit them all, but if we know that there's a certain couple or, or these, these are vital to, uh, you know, a potential flood event to get supplies or... Um, so Rick, it was you, right? Tim Mills? Tim Mills. Who else? Chris Flores. Alex Reichstrom. Uh-huh. Those ones come to mind. Okay. I think it was just four of you, weren't there? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that could be could an option that, you know, the committee could identify some of those problem areas and then and then that would just be a matter of talking with Yeah, so we could with Therese and Alan process. about prioritizing that when they're in the area. Maybe they could if it's a grading issue, you must have some green old stuff from the ancient road when you did that, so you've got a pretty good idea. We did the the ancient roads, which are yeah. a little bit different than right. the class four roads. Yeah. But you had to see some of the class four roads. Yeah. 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 And we've had some significant rain events, but I can always get a hold of you guys and see if you'd be willing to take a peek at them in the spring and then kind of, uh, you know, inventory them and say, hey, these are the roads that need some damage and, or have damage and need some repair and kind of prioritize them. So like, I'll send them all a letter. There's, there's plenty of people that are very respectful of the Oh, we agree. Mm -hmm. we're, not, yeah, no we're, not, yeah. we're not dissing four wheelers or anything. We just no. have a couple of, there's just a couple yes. of problem mm -hmm. areas. That's all. For the most well, part, people in Bethel are great stewards of yeah, the absolutely. roads for sure. But there definitely are times of the year that we have to be gentle with those roads. like. You know, when you get into April, May, early June, mm -hmm. you know, those roads are very delicate at that yeah. point, and any vehicle traffic on that can really um, do a lot of detriment to the to the road. So maybe, I know we don't typically go out and post those ones, but it might be something, or, or certain ones to post. I've seen that in a lot of towns where we're on the fall, that they've got a sign up saying, you know, prohibited 
it, like we put up for posting for uh, weights in the spring. Mm -hmm. They got a permit post, sign there. Post the hiking trails too, you know, to tell people to oh, stay yeah. out the trails. Right. But then you'd be classifying the class four road as a trail, right? Once you get down to. But there's definitely, you know, that two, two and a half months of the year where the trails are delicate. Yeah. And that's why Alan and AJ are going to go to that class. That way they can understand what their, you know, powers are to, to do that so that right. they can. And get some signs ordered. Some of the class for roads we drive on in the fall are, have been graded, and others haven't seen a grader for ever. Ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. I was on a class three road this year that hadn't seen grader. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> class three one. <laughs> right, Trace? That's true. It was. There was more but grass than there was gravel. <laughs> graded now, all the way to the top. A lot of the class fours are, are going to be tough to do any grade. Grading. There's not a lot there. Right. Yeah. There's no drainage. It should be more important to concentrate on water bars and where it's some greater ditching or some water bars. Across yeah. the road. That's where the most potential for damage is, I think. Yeah. 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 Good. Any further discussion on class four road policy? No, I was going to ask about the committee. I didn't, I didn't know we had a committee. That's great. Yeah, what, three or four years ago? Yeah. yeah. Well, the class four committee, did that start up right around when we had to go talk with the ancient road? We had a time period to either classify those as class fours or they were gone, right? right. And I think that's when the committee. <coughs> the committee originally was to go over some of these ancient roads and, yeah. and evaluate those and make recommendations to the select board, which did include some class four, but not, not all of them. Right. And so they, the thought was to continue on maybe with some of the class four roads we didn't evaluate first. Mm -hmm. Earlier. So how do, you, how do you feel the committee is currently? Is it, is it very active or? It's, no, it hasn't done anything. Since, since we were appointed. In my mind, we're, we're waiting for direction from the select boards to what they, what they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so probably it would be helpful for us to... Yeah, I'm gonna write. At this point, it probably right might, might wanna wait till town meeting day, but probably ought to be one of the first couple of meetings after town meeting day of yeah, I Maybe can some I'll just get that back together. Well, if I just, well, I'll write them all letters and just yeah. let them know what the board is looking for, and then they can kind yeah. of reorganize themselves. Obviously, they're not going to start meeting until spring until they can get around, but right. they can at least organize and get a, you know the map of the class fours, and, mm -hmm. and I can tell them what we had done during April and right. let them know. So. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. We'll move on. Uh, 2020 certificate of highway mileage through the state. You haven't done any, you haven't discontinued, you haven't added anything, so that's really Hasn't just changed. a motion to, I think it's, is it all of you, Chris? I put it in front of you at the top of the table. Um, I gave you mine, which is the original. So, you know, the motion for everyone to sign or just the chair? Uh, looks like just the just the chair. Yeah, yeah just the chair. We make a motion. We uh, authorize Chris to sign the certificate of highway mileage. Second. Okay. All in favor? All in favor. That's the application to conduct a charitable solicitation. Oh, I don't really assume that's going through. <laughs> it gets underneath it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Corn drops. Okay. There yeah. it is. Yeah. I thought it, they were one and the same. Oh. oh, okay. So let me relook at this one. Have they got a backup name in case of rain? Um, this one, it says select men. So it gives you enough place for trustees. For people. There's, there's at least three lines. Okay, there. Fit everybody just pass it around. It's not politically correct. 
proper pronoun? Proper pronoun. It depends on how literal you are. I thought they were. Yeah, I thought sense. one was this, the signature both page, both so I. Both uh, roads. No, we didn't actually get there. Wait. <laughs> we even had one in a few months. I know. Right? Mm -hmm. Historical Society coin drop request for May 16th. I would entertain a motion to approve. I just had a, a question about the proof of insurance. Yep. Are they, do they have their own? They, they are insured. The building is insured via us. So the only thing that they have insurance for is they have insurance for the contents downstairs. So they probably don't carry their own liability. They probably are under. I would say they're under us, under the towns. Well, do they? It's have more for if you had like cystic fibrosis or yeah, fibrosis. Yeah, they no, I understand. Yeah, I just wonder if something happens. We'll probably ought to make sure that they are covered. Well, yeah. they're, they've been covered. Yeah, I'm sure by. Because you can get a short-term riders to. You, you can know, and you, do this. If you need BLCT, to. you can actually get the tulip. So it's a whole process where they can mm. pay for one. And so I'll talk to. Um, Greg, yeah, feedback to see, because I had just asked him about his contents the other day to make sure they were separately insured. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So right now, May 16th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Did you say the second? Um, yeah. I moved. You second. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Historical Society's request to donate a World War II monument. So you can see Greg um, Fedak put in a letter, and right now they have no idea what they want it to look like. Um, and he, he was assuming he had about 250 names. So as I said in there, Kelly is looking at the zoning requirements because if you were to accept that donation, then it's town owned land, so you would be the applicant on the zoning permit. So I do have Kelly researching the appropriate zoning regulations right now to see what setbacks, et cetera, if you're interested in moving forward with the donation. Um, sounds like what he's hoping to do is to have um, uh, Rock of Ages donate a piece of stone and maybe have them, you know, either a plaque put on it or engraved into the stone. Um, but 250 names, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure of the dimensions myself of Fort Fortitude, so. Yeah, one of the questions I had was if we do accept this in con concept, are we accepting it specifically for Fort Fortitude, or is that movable? Well, I think once it's there, it's there. And, um, right, but like yeah, prior to it being there. Oh, sure, you guys could, you could say, sure, you could say, um, we'd love it, we just don't want it to go there. Okay. So um, we're, not, we're not locking ourselves into that placement of it? No. By saying yes? No, and right now they, you know, he, I, before he went too far down the rabbit hole and started designing and the whole thing, I wanted to see if you were even in favor of it. And um, so we obviously you would be apprised of and would be able to have say in what the design would be and that sort of thing. So did you think somewhere? No, better? more just the curiosity of, you know, How's it? where that decision came from for Fort 
Fortitude to be the placement for it, but also thinking about other spaces in town and mm -hmm. you know, not knowing if, if we said yes to this, would we be resigning ourselves to that as the only potential spot or would it still be up for discussion? Yeah. I think that had, <clears throat> that site has some history. It's why they go in there. Mm. Right, mm. right. And I'm not opposed to it. I just, it was more of a curiosity. Yeah. So I'll have to do is figure out, um, since it'd be, the next step would also be preliminary, which is, you know, once Kelly lets me know what the zoning regulations are, I'll give you a map of the area. So you, because it'll obviously set back supply, et cetera, all that sort of thing, to see what you would need um, or where it would need to be placed, you know, within there. And then he's going to have to do a little math to figure out, you know, how big of this is he thinking the writing's going to be? And if there's 250 names, how, how large is this going to be? Yeah, you know, is it an obelisk with a plaque mounted to it, or exactly. is it carved in stone, or exactly. whatever? Exactly, and it's super preliminary because yeah. he's done nothing. So I said, well, before you do, let's see if the select board is even interested in this. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not, then I didn't want him to waste any of his time. And the only thing I have going is Kelly looking at the zoning regulations for that area, that piece of land. Yeah. So. That was came to me. Is please. there a Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. There's two misspelled words in here that are driving me nuts. Oh, from his, on his letter? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it, do you I know? didn't write it, I just, he submitted it. Uh, I know, but they're driving me nuts. I had to read it like five times. And, oh, that's what he means. <laughs> is there a particular reason why they selected World War II as opposed to Vietnam World War or uh, no, World War I? We have a World War I. No, it's two. We have a World War One placard, and Greg has wanted Here. to do something for World War Two. And originally, my and I think it's why I was a little says confused World about the monument because he had wanted to do World a War similar one. placard to what's oh, here. Is that? It says he, World he War One in his letter, so that's what yeah. I was thinking. But he means World War Two. Okay. Oh, okay. They, All right. I'll leave that. No, there's a you're there's a flag for World War One. That's why he chose right. World War Two because you. Oh, I see. There's already the word. There's already a flag. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what Lynn Sorry. was saying. Right. I see it. And I think originally his thought had been to do a similar plaque to what's downstairs, except then he found when he started researching, he found there were so many more names mm -hmm. that it wouldn't just be a plaque. So then it morphed into the monument concept. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in the concept then i will let greg know and i'll get you the map and have kelly you know sort out of what the zoning regulations are and we'll get those to greg and then just tell him obviously since you're the applicant then you get you know design approval yeah there. i mean i yeah. i would be all behind it i mean i think i think history is very important and um 75 years I mean, history is very, very important. My grandfather served um, during that time. Uh, I, I guess I would just, it's a little difficult because we're giving them the blessing. We don't really know. Well, they're not, I mean, I'm going to tell them. Can it go there or how big can it be? So yeah. I would yeah. just say for him to caution before he yeah. Spend, yeah. spend a lot of money. He spends a lot of time on it to see what, what the options are. Exactly. Um, so we'll just get a map of the area and the zoning regs. Speak for him to write off more than he can fit or. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. Well, and, I, and he knew I that. A good idea. He knew that we were going to look at the zoning regulations, and that that would that actually may give him some guidelines right. because if there's there's obviously setbacks and that sort of thing, so mm -hmm. that could drive the whole project is what the zoning regs are. So, and I don't think sure. you could do something on that site with, you know, 250 names. Yeah, so, um, but I'll yeah. let him know, and he knew you guys would obviously have design approval. Royalton has a pretty large monument that they've done. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a card in the store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just do something to think about with that site. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you have walked down there recently, but foot access or, or walking down there is a little oh, tricky. Yeah. So in addition to the monument, I, I picture you either have to put in some steps or also a walkway so that it's accessible so people can walk. Mm, yeah. And well, that whole section of sidewalk needs some love yeah. anyway. <laughs> the whole area That's needs some love there. Right? Yeah. yeah, but Chainsaw definitely accessibility. Start. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. The tree's getting out of control. I think that's true. Yeah, right. Maybe something to look at, Therese, 
Yeah, but maybe that's something they're willing to do as far as if that's part of the plaque and, you know, if they want to put something there, it's maybe the access or, you know, we even I even talked about like a brick path where people buy bricks and put in, you know, with oh, their yes. family. So maybe there's some way to do, kind of deal with, kill two birds, one stone. Uh -huh. I, I, the last conversation I had with Greg was probably mm -hmm. close to a year ago, but I know he would, he was going to be doing fundraising for whatever it was, so I have a feeling there'll be some things kind of coming down the line. Okay. Um, so that's a good idea. All right. So we'll we'll take a, I'll talk to him and then <coughs> we'll take a walk over there and see what, what it looks like. BRI request to use the town hall for March for BU. It, um, was there a letter or something? Was there a letter or anything? No, I, I didn't see anything in the packet. But no, I attended the BRI meeting and I, they asked about. It. I said I would take care of it and ask at the next meeting, at your next meeting. I mean, the only thing I would just make the recommendation is anytime we donate the town hall we probably ought to have some sort of formal letter just so that we keep the process the same and um but i figured even you did it every year i wasn't sure yeah it was, uh, and kelly i think already had marked it off on the calendar anyways for sure. march for BU. so so i would entertain a motion to allow bri to um, use the town hall so in the month of March for the Bethel University at no charge. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Huh. Sneak actually, what we, yeah. actually, what we should anyway. start doing is saying that we'll allow them for the whole month at no charge, assuming they get the balloon off the yeah. <laughs> right. by, by any means they choose? Is that, right. that could be That could be a class. Yeah, How do we get the balloon yeah. out of it's rigging. I can you know, see mountain that. climbing one on one. It's a staging class. Yeah. Yeah. You're need staging. Get up there, right? I like a high Reverse. school engineering class. Yeah. Trampoline. You make that work. Yeah. 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 More helium balloons. <laughs> yeah, no balloons. No. No. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> no more mylar. Yeah. Uh, payroll authorization. Town manager and town treasurer. So this can go a couple of ways. We talked about this and we've outsourced payroll to comp account. So in this pack of stuff you signed, you saw what you're getting now. So right. you can still send Paul down to look at payroll. It's already been processed um, and he can initial it. And then if there's any issues, you'll deal with it later or you can just initial it as you did tonight at the board meeting. I don't really know, but um, do it either way. Every town does it a little bit differently um, on how you want to handle it. But that's what it's going to look like from now on is that packet. And then what I stapled to it was my um, was the time cards and the spreadsheet that I fill out to send to them. So. What do you think, Paul? You know, the only thing that I, I very rarely find anything. I mean, it's especially since Teresa's <laughs> been at the helm, I very I haven't found any kind of errors, and I'm not adding up hours and things like that anyway. I'm just kind of giving a general perusal of the time cards just for my own information sake kind of thing. I may see something that just kind of feeding the, the memory banks. So I enjoyed looking, you know, looking yeah. through it and see, see the, seeing the hours and things. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. We um, can continue as is. This last time, we didn't get the payroll until it was that yeah, day. So we didn't right. have, because they were redesigning their spreadsheet, we kind of, we did a lot of back and forth. I mean, we still had three errors, but it, it worked out, I think. Yeah. I think we got the I last one scheduled to, out today. Yeah, we need to, I don't know, make a motion or, or figure out which way we want to go just for the sake of meeting the statute and all that mm -hmm. stuff in case. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's up. good to keep a second set of eyes Yeah, it's on fine it, because I know if Paul sees something we talk about right. or whatever, so it is good to have somebody else. I wasn't sure about the timing, how it was going to go, because I think that we you have to usually have we processed 
but you, he came in and signed it before we sent it out to be processed. And mm -hmm. now it's we're not doing that. Now it's going to be processed, and then he's going to look at it. Right. Just timing-wise mm -hmm. is the way it's mm -hmm. going to work. But um, but a lot of times, well, the only few times before, you still were at the point where the correction of the of whatever I found mm -hmm. had to be done in the next payroll yeah, cycle was, anyway. Right. It's and all about timing. It's too of far the, um, in, the, in the cycle. Yeah, of sending out the direct deposits. That's And if it's yeah. holiday, forget it. Then yeah, really it kind of messes it up. So. Yeah. Then you should just continue as is, but yeah. <clears throat> then you can still. Yeah. How, do you normally make that motion in March? Or what do you guys, how do you normally address we that? We do that right after town meeting, after yeah. we have. Um, right after the select the board, board looks like what you do. Board looks then, we, yeah, yeah. then why don't we just not do anything somebody. with it now? We'll just leave it as is because well, Paul will continue to approve it, and then you'll just make that same motion again in March. Right. I'm the same way. I want because you have, you have to have it in by what Tuesday or to yes. copy count. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like to do it first thing Monday morning and be done with right. it. It's off my desk, and then I do it and it's done. And then, um, but I, you know, and. Um, I'll continue to do that, and we'll just look at it. If we find anything, we'll fix it the next time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's great that we have it down to the point where the errors and emissions are yeah. non-existent, yeah. but Minimal. you know, it was put it's, into place for a reason. It's pretty much double check anyways, because everybody's time signed by the supervisor, mm -hmm. and then Therese okays it from there. So I just usually do the yeah. math or double check their math. Yeah, I, I kind of look I look at the math a little bit, yeah. and if it's not signed by a, yeah. by a manager, then I'll ask about it, you know, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, so I think that we should just leave it as yeah. is, and then we'll make, we'll do that motion again in March, so yeah. which be good. Yeah. I'm the same way as Paul. I like, you, you need it in the minutes. So. Yeah. No, I think it's good to have somebody um, with yeah. a second set of eyes from the select board, because that was... Well, at least when I came on, I, th I think at that point Lisa was doing Lisa it. Lisa was doing uh, it, yeah. And it was something that they had just started a year, maybe prior to that. But uh, I don't know who was doing it prior to that, if it was done in the town office or... You got me. But no, I have no idea. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Anybody want to upseat Paul to... To do that, yeah. Until March. <laughs> no, he's got it. Don't, don't be cutting in on my cop time, you know? <laughs> he has a I get so that extra cop time. I get that extra cop time. <laughs> he has it down to a science. Yeah. Also. Well, especially the payables. I mean, I really like looking at the payables. Oh, that's, and, yeah, that's good. That no, but it's always nice to have a second size on those. Okay. Is there a motion? No. No, no we'll just wait until after um, town meeting and then. Okay. Usually we um, we deal with that with the first meeting, yep. after town meeting instead. Okay. Yeah. So that. Yeah. Three says in there requests for proposal for architect for town garage. So Chris and I talked briefly on Thursday, Friday, Friday I guess, and um, because obviously what I'm looking for here is some direction. All right, if you want to go to the metal building, that's fine, but you're looking at a 25-year building, or are you building something further, you know, out that you want, so you're looking for something more. Um, so Chris said that he actually was thinking about just a metal building, because, you know, in 25 years, you'll have some stuff taken care of. You'll have, you know, some bond payments wrapped up, and then Right now, you currently don't own a piece of land to put in, say, a town garage and a municipal building, but in 25 years, who knows what the situation might be. Either way, we're still going to need a person to, even if it's a metal building, that's fine, but <coughs> we all know we have some site issues um, to put in the same spot, so we're going to need to take a peek at that. There's now, there's new energy codes and standards, There's and um, we'll need, and there'll be state permitting. So. Um, I think to to put out an RFP for an architect to do a little bit of a feasibility study, let us know what we're looking at cost-wise, especially for that site, and just so we know what we're looking for, because obviously um, our budget for this is going to be, it's not going to be a big budget. You know, metal buildings usually can get for a reasonable price, but with the new energy standards, I'm not sure what's going to you may end up having to put some sort of panelized system inside, or but obviously there's things we don't have in place right now. Like for if somebody was in the garage with a 
truck running and they had an event, um, you know, you should have safety standards and so that the doors will open so that or there's some sort of ventilation system. And there's going to be a few things like that that they yeah. don't have that will kick into place. But when I spoke to Alan, we're looking at a similar size building, maybe an extra bay. And, um, you know, we'll have a mezzanine that would be rated for store like parts and that sort of thing. If you know, not put an office upstairs, nothing like that that's going to trigger all the um, ADA, ADA issues. ADA. And I think the challenge we have in Bethel, obviously, is the footprint to work with. We, you know, we don't we don't have a lot of real estate in the areas we do have real estate are right next to the river where we, you know, can't build in. So I, I think it would be a good idea to get some sort of professional opinion to at least start where we're at now and yeah. say, can could we move forward with a new building there because we have. You know the landfill. You know there's, yeah. there's a couple of complex there's things a there. So situations. before we get the cart in front of the horse, should we mm -hmm. should That's we right. take a little bit of the money that we've saved, um, put an RFQ out there to to do a small somebody to do a small thing. study on mm -hmm. it on what could we build there? And and so is your thought to to look at it for both the metal building and well not necessarily if the board is in agreement then then that's going to be better because it would narrow the scope of the you know the RFP because then I can say okay look what we want to put there is an, a metal building and you know then we can then they're not spending their time giving you three different design options for what could be there if we if you are in agreement that you want it to be a metal building then that's going to narrow the scope and which will be easier and cheaper but if you are unsure and some of you want maybe a metal building and some maybe want it to be built for to last longer then then we would say maybe we're looking at it asking for a couple of options so the option to do anything with the existing building is just crazy it's, it's yeah. crazy yeah. to even it's think not about yeah. Yeah. you just tear it down it's, yeah yeah. Is it that bad shape? Yeah. yeah it's way extended it's useful i went through it the other day and there's and it, it's way past its 25 year life and we don't even have enough room to put all the equipment under cover anymore yeah, yeah so I, I mean if, uh, if you're going to put up something temporary for 25 years why not spend a little lot less money put addition on to get by until you can do the because you can't right now there is an addition on it that that um yeah, the, that the back workers back section. um of the road crew at, at some point had done mm -hmm. and um and, and it's coming apart, and um, so that needs to be torn off too. And the existing metal, it's, it's just one of those situations, you know, all the washers that had, you know, rubber gaskets around them, the whole thing is kind of. Because the issue the, the issue we're having right now, at least over the last three years in a row, we, we have spent probably at least $12,000 a year on just maintaining that, you know, beyond normal maintenance <laughs> of that building to keep that building. Um, workable and of course you know the state keeps sending different guidelines of you know you know truck wash or, or anything you have up there you, you know you have different things that we have to do up there so we've been spending we've been spending a fair amount of money up there the last couple of years for really getting back nothing um you know where at one point we had figured you know for double that money a year you could have a brand new facility um so so be but nice right now, the, the uncertainty is what can we build there? Uh, because you have yeah. the dump portion of it on, um, you have the building, you have the, you know, the, you have the, um, the <coughs> sand pit, you know, below it. You know, what could you, what would the footprint look like? And could, is it even worth putting another building there? Because clearly the building that needs to go there needs to be slightly larger than the one we have it, now. It does need to be larger. They were, kind of, Al and I were talking like yeah. another, at least like another bay with, would yeah. be good. And um, I mean, you know, obviously it doesn't have like an up to date or up to code you know, oil water separator and yeah. it's just a lot of issues See, with it. Water, I mean, if you think of it, maybe I'm wrong, but there's still a lot of room. There's a lot of room back there. I think so, but for me, I don't know, um, where exactly in that footprint of land up there falls the old dump because you and I know we disturb that and 
we don't want to disturb that because that's A and R and that's a whole other issue. So I don't know the parameters of that lot where this dump is, but you're right. There certainly is more room, but I also have to look at, we also have to adhere to our own zoning regulations. And if we were going to be cut back to setback, then we need to go to the DRB. And, and um, so there's several cans of worms and that I think that's why we need a professional to come in and take a peek and see what our- Because they would look into all that, right? They would, they'll, right. they'll look at that. They'll also look at, yeah, what are the state energy codes? What's it gonna require us to do? And um, you know, that sort of thing. But what I was looking for was before we went out was to figure out what the board is looking for. Are you looking for a 25 year building in hopes that in 25 years, Bethel's in a position where they could buy a piece of land and combine you know, the town, the public highway department or the public works department and the municipal office, because the municipal office is, you know, we're certainly planning on staying there. That building owes you nothing. You were given, it was given to you. It needs electrical. But again, that's something that we're putting money into the. Because nobody's maintained it, right. so it needs <coughs> a new electrical, mm -hmm. it needs Operating. to be insulated and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, everybody can stay where it, you know, the town office can certainly stay there and um, have, needs to have some maintenance done to it. But, um, well, plus too, if you ever did sell it, you'd get some money back because you had maintained it. And um, then to deal with the town garage. But I don't know if you're all in, I guess that's a question for each one of you is how do you feel about metal building versus something that's gonna last longer than 25 years? I'm, I just don't go the metal building because in 25 years, we don't know what the state's gonna want us to you know, to meet requirements in 25 years, you know, we don't know. Yeah. And this one's lasted longer than 25 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they say 25 years, we might get 40 out of it or whatever. Maybe it depends on, you know, maintenance and you right. kind of look at, which is the other issue, how well it had been maintained in the past, but certainly, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of it isn't really designed to start some of those things to start kind of failing after a 25 year lifespan. But yeah, maybe we can do more maintenance or maybe too, this, uh, the architect may know of somebody, maybe they do a, a metal building that's longer lifespan. There's big things maintenance on anything. In Absolutely. I think it's hard to get a wrap your head around how much this is gonna cost. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. I mean, obviously, if you want to build something that's going to last 50 years, if it's only, you know, X, X number of dollars more than the 25, right. then it's like we're doing with the water system. Mm -hmm. You know, go for it, plan for the long run, yeah. as opposed to the metal building. I mean, I like, I've seen a lot of metal buildings that, that will work perfectly well for what we need. Yep. As long as you keep the salt and everything out of them and you mm -hmm. do your washing outside, uh, you know, and, and do the maintenance on the building, the metal building will last yeah, cause that's a long the, time. And the salt shed is a separate, you know, that'll be, we do need a new salt shed, so that'll be yeah. built at a different time. Um, and there's usually, or there has been some grant money available right. for yeah. that. TRO yeah, I was gonna say, that, there's TRO usually TRO grant TRO. money out there for salt sheds. There is. I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Two Rivers has got. Uh, yeah, for salt, salt sheds, I've seen it. Salt shed and, um, but grants. not necessarily the town garage itself. But certainly but there might be some sort of oh, look, you know, municipal you grant out there. Some sort of that. BLCT, you know, or at least for the design or, or, or something, or maybe or something. even some of the safety features that need to go into it. So, yeah. but anyways, we'll need to. I mean, I think ideally, if we had the proper footprint, ideally, you know, to have the town office and the public works be one building would be most ideal, but I right. guess, I don't yeah, know if we have a site happen. like that. And, don't. Um, Nothing we currently own, that's for mm -hmm. sure. And, and do you want to mix the two? I mean, there's so much truck traffic and yeah. and the salt and the you yeah. know, Just, uh, gravel and sand and all that. It's, uh, right. It'd be nice to have a building like Royalton has for their, uh, you know, town offices, mm -hmm. separate. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Lindley? Yeah, I mean, normally I'm, I'm more on the mindset of going, investing more towards the future and for longer term. But I think in this case, because we're fighting such an uphill battle with all of the things being 10, 20, 50 years overdue. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's, it's not ideal. I don't love the idea of just sort of putting something together for a 25 year span, but I don't think that it's necessarily in our best interest given the site issues that we might face and the additional issues of 
our municipal offices needing renovations and potentially future yeah. <coughs> new site. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is there any way we can move move forward with you know some sort of feasibility study on that property to see what what we could do with it? Sure. While at the same time we continue to talk as a board because you know the board. You know, we only have two months before town meeting day, so mm. things well, could be a little different on the board or may not, but yeah. it gives us some time to get through that hurdle of yeah. of a uh, new board or not, and then we could really put it as a top uh, agenda item going forward on dealing with the, um, the garage. Because, I mean, I think we all agree that, you know, every year of dumping, you know, we figured it out there with some quick math there when Grant was here that, you know, with the money we're putting in it a year just to keep the building afloat, we it could pay half of the payment, you know, on a on a new facility. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think we could just do the RFP and then and get word the RFP so that one that the first thing they're going to tackle is you know let's talk about what are our issues with the site, yeah, what size we have, what what are our needs, what are right. the codes, what is the you know get that sort of information because that. Obviously, that's going to drive the bus too. Because then we can figure out what what kind of structure yeah. will, will fit there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you know, the salt shed is very important to, right. um, for up there. Yeah. Cause so then they're going to look at the whole piece of land and say, okay, the salt shed could go here, and you know, but this is where the footprint needs to go, and you know, who knows? Yeah. Where where, where can we actually build? <laughs> yeah. Can we build on the same exact site, and then how much? Bigger can that footprint or be? Or do we have to turn it Exactly. Swing so, it around the other right. way. Well, I will yeah. put together, a, I'll draft an RFP. I have, I have a couple samples from other towns, so we'll take a peek at that. And, and uh, that would have some. Where the uh, fire department is, is that in the point? Mm -hmm. I think it is, it is. actually. Yeah, and I did yeah. speak to the fire chief about that, how he, they got their land and and I know it's a farmer that owns it, but yeah, that area, I know it crosses the streets, and I think that is too in the floodplain. It does, but Part of the thing, issue is too about that is, do you, is that one of the first things you want to see when people drive into Bethel is if you're trying to get Bethel revitalized and bring people here to invest money in the town is to have the town garage right there. That's the first thing put to the fire station. That's a personal opinion, you know, and then, because you, if you were going to move the materials to store somewhere else, and then is that make it feasible for the road crew to go from point A to point B? And you know yeah. what I mean, cutting that, down. That section, want to put that, there. that section is in a floodplain. However, it's buildable there because yeah, because route um, because route twelve right there is a definition of what because the way the state has their right. floodplains, you can't cross roads with it. So. Um, anything, anything <coughs> on the river side of Route 12, right now to build in that would be very difficult, if not possible. But, but to the, you know, if you're traveling north, anything to the west side of that road is buildable. You'd have, you just have to, I believe, just meet the FEMA well, yeah, requirements. Well, yeah, like where I am, that's yeah, that's floodplain. Floodplain, but it's still buildable. Right, but because it's buildable because that the road is a barrier. Right. Even though you know, not, if you, if so you, you could. It's not right. saying you couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, you very well could buy that piece of property, and well, if if you could, well, and build the something. fire station is up a little higher than, than they built. They had. To, well, I think they had to bring that. they had to bring that up to yeah, the, the hundred year flood yeah. right. level because right. the river corridor is different than the floodplain, and, and what you're talking yeah. about is right. river corridor doesn't go across Route Twelve. Right, we're talking floodplain, not river corridor. Mm -hmm. so. right. You could. You just have to bring it up to the FEMA requirements. Yeah. So the answer is it's yes. not a bad it's not You could build there. But it's the material is being stored there. <laughs> well, um, you just, stuff like that. You'd have to do something with that brook coming yeah. out. Yeah. Well, you could, uh, you could build yeah, your, I think putting the materials you could build your town there. office and this whole building there and you could keep the piece of property there and that sort of up there and put yourself in. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, it's just a matter of trying to And you could leave the building there and you could put a couple of pieces of there. I'm not sure the guy has to there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. And then there's usually a fighting between the yeah. Share, so. <laughs> but I, I, well, why don't we, um, if we all agree, why don't we move forward, if everybody agrees, why don't we move forward with at least taking a look at the piece of plant uh, property that we currently yeah. own and see what our options are on that. And then <coughs> based upon the feedback that we get from there, then we could, you know, 
does it make sense to go forward and build something there or do we need to look somewhere else right yeah well once um, they, they they look at that place they're going to tell us whether we can dig down for a foundation or whatever i mean we might not be able to yeah yeah so i think yeah, it yeah be, i don't know what's under there now if it's just a slab with some frost walls or what i don't know i don't know that was there i mean it's definitely worth also looking at you know getting into that and looking at what other options there are other than that piece of property too mm -hmm. you know of course when that garage like was built the fire station or regular. others you know when that garage was built there was no regulations on on landfills under right. that stuff and, yeah yeah. So I think it, the only thing is, is, you know, who, who or what, you know, puts the time in. You know, I know in the past they had a, um, uh, they had a study group for, uh, I don't know if it was both for the municipal offices and the highway, or maybe it was just the highway. It right. might have been both. Yeah, but they did have a study group. Right. But the way we've been with committees right now, I mean, mm -hmm. we can't get enough people We'll we don't talk about it here in a minute, but you don't need a committee. You need, you know, need an architect to yeah, tell you what's exactly. what the rules. No, but I'm about. saying if we wanted to explore other options. Yeah. You know, unless we spend a tremendous amount of time doing that, you know. Um, but we're having a hard enough time with the other committees holding them. You know, the planning committee now doesn't even have enough people to even be legal. So. Well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, we're kind of. That's why I'm going Wednesday. So we'll see what the situation is. But all right, so I'll move forward with that and just look at the feasibility study for the site, yeah. the existing mm -hmm. site, and see what we can get, what it's going to trigger. And, and I got to think, you know, I got to think that there's probably some municipal grant out there, maybe not for building, but maybe either for planning or you know, there might be something out there. We'll take a look. I'm not sure. Help us. If not, I mean, we have capital funds in there. Probably. Yeah, I know. We have limited. That's why I don't want it to be too um, vague because, you know, but we'll put a cap yeah. on it, how much we're looking for. So I'll read a couple more and talk to somebody who does it and see, you know, what kind of money I'm looking at here for yeah. um, doing the study. So. Oh, it's definitely worth moving forward with. Well, yeah, exactly. We need to move yep. forward with mm. it. Yep. And then I would say, you know, once town meeting hits, you know, we we would probably probably establish this as a a continuation uh, agenda item for yeah, it's on your for priorities. this year or on your list to just keep working at yeah. kind of like the water bond this year. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. it's done. You can water it. possibility um, it was identified in our sanitary survey that um, the state was concerned about the pressure that residents had up there um, especially if you needed to run water in the village for a fire flow if we had a fire and they were pulling out of hydrants it would really drop from up there actually by today's standards um, the water would have never been allowed to go to Crystal Drive so Tim Mills and I met with the residents of Crystal Drive um, before Christmas we sent them a letter kind of saying, this is what we know, and, but we don't know what, what's going on up there. We only know what the state has said to us. So we met with all the residents, or most of the residents of Crystal Drive, and they were great. And they talked to us about what was ongoing. And um, some of them are experiencing intermittent water. We're like, why are you not calling? We, we didn't know for sure. But someone's like, oh, you're in the shower and the water stops. But then it comes back on. It's amazing what people were will live with, and Just the way it is. yeah, exactly. That's exactly the way it was. And um, so we got all the feedback from them. We talked about wells. Um, some of the residents want the town to install the wells and then lease them the wells, kind of so they'd still make a quarterly payment, which was a, a thought Tim had had, and we discussed that with the state, and they said no. But now that we have, we've spoken to the residents. Um, Tim and I have a meeting tomorrow. Um, with the engineers, I'm not sure if one of the state reps that we want to speak to is going to be there as well to find out, you know, what are the options. So the residents up there, because it has been something Bethel's done before, drilled wells for people, and they did it down on Pleasant Street. And um, what we're 
going to do is look at what our options are. Some of the residents are like, Joel's a well, we own it, we're done, then we don't have to pay a water bill. Some residents said, no, we want you to go up, we want to pay the quarterly water bill and lease it from you. And then some were like, well, if you could guarantee, <laughs> just issue a warranty for five years on the well, then we'd be okay with that. And so we're kind of still exploring the options. We need to talk to the state now to say, okay, this is what the residents are experiencing. Now we know for sure, this is what they're saying, you know, what can we do? Um, so as soon as, and we told the residents, as soon as we hear back from the state um, and get answers to those questions, we'll let them know um, what the option is. So a lot of that isn't that old, correct? It's, uh, I mean, 30 years? Maybe, I'm it not sure. It was basically under slide, under. Exactly, because some people, you know, because, yeah, it's not on its own. It's not getting the pressure that it needs. So it certainly by today's standards never would have been allowed. So as much as we, you know, hate the thought of taking somebody off the water system, you know, we also need to do what's best for them and the rest of the system. But it is a violation that the state knows that we have and that we've been trying to figure out how to address. Um, we couldn't put it in the $2.8 million water bond because the engineered response for this was almost $800,000. If you were to put buy a piece of land to build a pump station to serve, you know, 10 or 11 houses. So um, it was just too much and the 2.8 we needed to do just downtown. But the state's aware that we, Rome wasn't built in a day and that the system has several issues. And so that's where we're at right now is working with the residents and, and they were wonderful and came down and met with us. And so now we fully understand what's going on. And once we get answers from the state, we'll let them know. And, see where we are in the process. We have not hired an engineer to go do site surveys yet to figure out where wells could go or anything like that. So that would be once we get permission from the state and, and we're um, okayed by the Crystal Drive residents, that would be the next step, would be to hire someone to go up and do the survey to figure out where the wells would go. So at this point, we've pretty much identified the issue or issues up here, and now we're just kind of looking for what the the most uh, efficient way of going about solving the problem will be if that's either putting in a pump station and yeah. doing it that way or if it's drilling wells or something else. Yeah, because that's uh, not fiscally feasible yeah. to spend, you know, $800,000 for 11 houses. That's that's crazy, you know, but that's not. So um, that's why the wells, and Bethel had done wells before for a few residents, so. So we'll figure that out, we'll, you know, the. Yep. It, it, it'll be a project that'll kind of be coming after the Main Street ish, you know, we'll get Main Street done and then we'll start trying to figure out how we're going to tackle that one. But, so, but early on anyways, it's been favorable with, with yeah, the residents absolutely. up there. Yeah, absolutely. They so. were very gracious and, um, and mm -hmm. were very helpful as Tim and I, you know, Tim's only had taken over the system two years ago and we just didn't know what they were experiencing. So the state can do, you know, did a model, but they do it on the computer. They're not actually out there testing pressure. So, um, but yeah, so that's where we're at with that. Anything further on the town garage? All good. <coughs> okay, town manager's report. So let's see, most of it you have. So. Um, so you did see in the packet was the resignation of Andrew Delaney from the Planning Commission. Um, so that would leave Andy Stone, Peter Dorn, and Cecil Washburn. So I'm going to attend the meeting Wednesday to see, um, you know, what's going on in the Planning Commission to see if, if they're all going to continue or all the members that are currently on Planning Commission staying on the Planning Commission. Um, there are laws about this, obviously, that you have to have least members, and they actually don't all have to be residents of Bethel, which is interesting. Um, we actually had a non-resident in our in the last town I hmm. managed, and um, that he had lived in Bethel or Bristol for years, and then he moved to Middlebury, so he still served. Hmm. So it does give you a little wiggle room. So certainly, we're looking for people that are interested in planning and zoning and, and have some time to put in. Um, they do make monthly meetings on Wednesday at 7. Um, I believe they meet once a month. It's like the third Wednesday. Or yeah, it's the middle of the, right. it's the middle of whatever this one is going to be this Wednesday. Yeah. The second Wednesday. I think it's the third. It's the third one. Wednesday. Is it? I'd have to look at a calendar because it's this Wednesday. What is by statute? How, how many members have to be part of the, to, 
to make it illegal? We need to have three. So currently, um, technically we do. Technically we do, unless <laughs> unless I get bad news Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> but if you look at the minutes from the last few meetings, they some of those members have not been there exactly on a regular basis that's why i want to go on wednesday and i don't think i thought i put maybe in here but i guess i didn't i had printed out so should we be i printed out the um the ordinance on planning commissions for the state but i guess it's on yeah my desk so i'll take a, i'll find out wednesday chris i'm going to the meeting so i'll have more to report back to you next time but certainly if people are out there that are interested in in land rights and zoning regulations then obviously the planning commission would love to would love some new members and there's a there's a representative from two rivers that's been yep attending the meetings and working with sarah with the planning commission too sarah yeah 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 yep. so i'll meet them on wednesday and i'll have more information for you next time should we look at at this point of putting something out there as an advertisement for I mean, I'm trying to get members, members for the rec for planning. I think I've sent out things on Facebook about planning and the rec already. Um, I think what we need to do is do a bigger push at um, town meeting as well um, around that time and look for members. Maybe I can try to do um, Zoe or something to do a little article in the paper. I don't know. I mean, police is always putting a push in for us, letting us know. We have, whatever your interest is, we have a committee for you. <laughs> so. Um, the other one is, um, what's her name? What? What is, is oh, Jennifer Schomp is just taking a leave of absence from the Conservation Commission. That was on here. Um, and if any of you are getting any questions about the free table being removed from the transfer station, that is was addressed at the last um, Bethel Royalton transfer station meeting, and I did give you the information in your packet that Jen, uh, the new facility manager, Jen Barlin, had put together, which was very nice, and, and that's in your packet. So if you have um, questions about that, you have information to give residents of Bethel. So right now it's not coming back. Um, and, um, you know, they supported Jen and they hired her to cut costs and clean up the transfer station and this was part of it, so. I mean, wh while we're on that topic, it, I mean, after seeing the write-up, it's, you know, kind of reminded me a little bit of the trash ordinance, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's just too bad because the, originally that free table was fairly valuable to a lot of individuals mm -hmm. and it was yeah. kind of a, like I remember, you know, when my kids were big enough and we had this really nice pack and play, you know, that cost like a hundred bucks, you know, we put it down there on the table and it was gone within like 10 seconds, you know? Mm -hmm. So those things are nice, but you know, when I'm reading through this list of things that people are throwing in there, it's like, what? thanks for, you know, spoiling it for everybody else, you mm -hmm. know I mean? Talking about bags of kitty litter used, I mean, come on, I mean. I know. And it, it's too bad. It is. However, I mean, however, is. looking through it, I'm like, you know, taking the table away is one thing, but I don't know if I agree with the dollar figures associated with cleaning yeah, the table. Yeah, some like, like, yeah. Uh, Come on. It's uh, not just you throw it into the rubbish. You, you've got to sort through it. Pick well, up I know, metal. but. I mean, a lot of people, they're just throwing that stuff in the rubbish right now. I mean, they're claiming right now, it, you know, it's eight to ten, eight to twelve thousand dollars a year it costs to have that table that I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I mean, no by the time, but you think about how many hours it takes somebody, and you're, you know, you're, and you know, yeah. your employee plus the hours, but whatever. They, anyways, point is, it's gone. So uh, you can donate to the yeah. um, Randolph to thrift stops, thrift store. There's also something in Royalton. Do you know there's what two, that is? There's two thrift stores down there, I believe, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Royalton. Okay. There's um, one in Royalton. Yep, and there's <coughs> but again, it's just goodwill it, and other places. It's really sad that people kind of looked at this table as a way of not having to pay their trash bill and just throw stuff on there, you know. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I know when I've always, and I've put a lot of stuff I've down there, I've always looked to see like, oh, it's okay, it's quality, there's not a single stain in it, or, you know, and then you put it down there, not just throw stuff on the table. And exactly. I mean, and that's it. You know, sad that one like that. bad apple spoils the bunch, as they say. Well, it so. seems like there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> that was odd. So, um... So anyway, so if you have, if Bethel residents contact you, that's information that you can provide to them. Um, we're gonna have a new utility person, uh, Richard Manning, starts full-time on the 20th. Uh, he's gonna start working right away to secure his level 
one water and um, wastewater licenses. That's quite the process to undertake. So, um, but I'm looking forward to it. He's Bethel resident. Nice to keep that salary in Bethel. And Is that I think, to take more than Yes. Yeah, I think he's going to be a you know good addition. And how long does it take to get? I don't. Get the I, I, I don't know. I'd have right now. He they'll run. Uh, he will run under Tim's, and I don't know because the classes are not online. I know last time Tim actually took the classes with Morgan, um, so you okay. have to go to some of these. So I'm not sure what and, the timetable uh, is. I'd have to ask. And does the state give us a grace period of not having two licensees or? How does that work? They, I mean, obviously they don't have a choice. I mean, right now, immediately he'll run under Tim's license. So mm -hmm. there's caveats for that. But I don't know how long it takes. I'll have to ask Tim. Um, there could be some hours involved too, right? Uh, yeah, I imagine there's, so I'll just ask Tim what are the really requirements. No, I would assume it has something to do with, you know, obviously getting a document that says yeah. your license, mm -hmm. but there are probably so many hours that you're going to serve doing that role I imagine you're it, allowed to do it on your own. Like a lot of stuff, electrical yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. You and you have to be tied to a system, obviously, just like I can't, mm -hmm. well, I could, but somebody couldn't just go get their water, one license, you know, you have to be tied to a system. So he'll be filling the exact role that Morgan was yes. in? Or? Yep, yep, because we didn't hire to replace Doug Marshall. So um, that was just we put a seasonal person in there, and Alan took over Doug Marshall's route. So that seems to have worked well. And um, that gentleman, Dave Bergeron, who's been a great addition, um, will be leaving in April to go back to Pike. And um, so currently, that is the plan for the position because we needed water, wastewater. And there'll be the trade off from yep. half a year to half a year. Yep, or? winters with Alan, summers with him. Okay. Yep. And, um, so anyway, so we're very excited about that. Um, I met with Alex Ricer the other day. He's going to give me, we went through the entire basement of the town office, which, which is going to be hoed out this summer. I'm going to have the road crew come down and we're going to have, it's going to take a couple days to get some of the stuff. It's just, it's like the free table in our basement. There's a whole bunch of junk in there that needs to go. And then we will be able to put in some, once it's insulated, put some shelving in and stuff. It just Alex is going to provide me with an estimate, which I'm sure is going to scare the bejeepers out of me. But um, I won't release his number, obviously, for bid purposes. Um, the upstairs in the attic, I had the fire chief, because we're supposed to wear a respirator, he sampled that material. So that's been sent away. We should have the results back, because if that's a zone of light, it needs to be remediated. And that's going to be pricey, but they have a trust that will pay 50% of that. And I need to have that taken care of before I can have the electrical <laughs> upgraded. Um, and we're also talking to the neighbor to see if we can, um, he seems very open to letting us, the property to our left, that um, it, about Park us have a couple parking two. maybe, yep. two or three spaces. So um, these three of us there could park there. That would take care of it. The, also, the, not the attached quote unquote garage, but the other little building aside from that, Tim wants to tear down and move that hydrant, which if we moved it back would gain us another space there too for parking. So um, <clears throat> so that's where we're kind of stand with the town Did you office. get anywhere with um, the chairs that are downstairs, the, the well, school or anybody wanting to not take yet. those? Not yet. the school. Yes. I, I have a feeling the school will take some. Because I was going to say maybe the art department. Well, you have, to, you, know. you have to pick through. Yeah. I think that yeah, was I, it. Yeah, I grabbed huh. I grab one out of there because I might have somebody who's interested in the in the whole lot of them. <clears throat> but the one, I, the only one I could really get access to is pretty well busted up. Mm -hmm. You could cannibalize it to to repair other ones. So I wanted to try to get I, down I the basement and get a yeah. nice one. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, what's going to end up happening. Is use. is right. Is even if someone came in and took them all, we've had had a resident come and pick up a couple. Um, as Kelly put out on mm -hmm. Facebook. So, but they. They need to go, and there's just so much stuff. We did have a gentleman um, from Boy Scouts come the other day, and he picked up a bunch of stuff that was left from when Boy Scouts used to have their meetings down there. Mm -hmm. He was very nice and said, oh, do you want me to put it all in a pile and you can come and look at it? And we're like, no, <laughs> take it, whatever, take it. Take it. <laughs> have at it, we're happy that you're taking it. So- um, We can have yard sale. It's, well, it's too bad because some of the well, things no, that were down there, down there have been the Boy Scouts. smashed, you know, mm -hmm. and, and destroyed. So, and of course, the door from the bay is like this much of the bottom is totally missing. So the rats, you know, it's not like they need to they just walk in and out. 
Just so we're trying to deal with all those. You didn't things. tell me anything about rats. Oh, well, that was our little <laughs> secret. She wanted you to go downstairs. Yeah. So are we in violation with that trash ordinance? <laughs> I, no, it's all contained. Yeah. It's all covered. There's no garbage or litter down there. It's just stuff. You just need to get a cat. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this. Yeah. 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 And you can get to use litter at the that's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, that's at right. the free table. Yeah. That's right. All set to go. So Tim and I have a 90% uh, complete drawing meeting tomorrow with Aldrich and Elliot and um, some from the state for financing. So that's moving along. Uh, Tim, Dietrich, and I met with Wade Masura of BLCT to address um, any issues unaddressed from his last inspection of all the facilities. And uh, Tim and Dietrich are working and together creating, you know, some programming to address some issues that are out there. Um, FEMA continues, you know, weekly. Jessica was here for six hours last week and she'll be back this week. Um, it's going to trigger us to pay for an additional $7,000 that I did not budget for, for a single audit next year. Um, Rick Brigham from Solid Ben and Power seemed to think that there was FEMA money out there that would trigger, that would help pay for it. But I just heard back yesterday from um, one lady um, at the state, or at the state level, and she didn't think that there was. Jessica is also looking for us, and I had sent an email to Chris Bump and Joe Perigo about will, um, the federal uh, for federal highways because we did all that Camp Brook work. Would is there money from them? Mm. So if not, uh, then that's something we'll basically pick up in our ERAF next time. Is mm. when we budget that next year, we'll take care of it then. So I'm okay. still working that angle because if Rick has seen it, then it's happened before, and I just need to try to figure out how to right. get some of that paid for. So yeah, so this week um, I'm going to meet the, going to the planning commission meeting on when, so tomorrow's the water, Wednesday planning commission, Thursday FEMA and a representative from Bernie Sanders' office called. She wants to stop by on Thursday just to talk about that phone, see what's what, so that's good. Um, Dietrich got the road crew job descriptions done. Um, they gave me some feedback I looked at this weekend and put them on Dietrich's desk tonight. Um, so they'll be signing those this week, which is great news. Um, we're going to be applying to VLCT for a grant for some, uh, it's going to be like cones and maybe safety barricades, that type of thing. Um, that'll need to go out this week and there'll be a match, but it'll just come out of the highway budget. Um, so I don't think of anything else. That's, that's it for those pending that I can think of right now. Yeah, I had a couple of questions under the budget status report. Sure. Uh, and I know we had talked about it before, and I couldn't remember what the answer was, but under the materials, uh, we have we have uh, monies in there for um, gravel yep. and culverts. And I just had wondered, is, is any portion of that FEMA-related that's in there, or is so it is all is the twenty four thousand dollars we spent in gravel is that all non FEMA related Actually, material that we put on our roads or is some of that FEMA related and some's not right. or well the culverts are not the any of the culvert budget is okay. our budget that's not the deal with the gravel budget is this um, this kind of got sugared out a little bit last week was Alan uh, when you were done Chris well Chris knows because we've been doing it um, you have to go out and measure you know, the, every road that you did, that you repaired, and how long is the ditch, how deep is the ditch, or how long is the road, and so how many materials. So Alan, I had Alan do the non-contract work, and Chris and I doing the contract work. So when Jessica was looking at the numbers, she's like, Therese, you don't have enough gravel in here that you've coded as expenses to cover this. And I explained to her um, that the prior town manager had told both Alan and I the same thing, that he had had some loads sent back to the town barrage that so he believed that we received all of the gravel back that we put down but alan kept saying no that's that can't be right and so mm -hmm. when we met with jessica she was like no it's definitely not right so i think that well, that's what i'm up, thinking is i think there's we're gonna end up getting more gravel back i ended up giving her invoices for the two prior purchases for the 
prior fiscal year. And so I do think we're going to see some of that, but I can't quantify it right now. She's I was, working out the formula. I was thinking of the roads that we graveled that were non-FEMA roads this year, and I just couldn't figure out how that would equal 24,000. Yeah, so I so think I'm, that, yeah. I, I think, think we'll there's, see. you know, I don't know if it's 12,000 worth of FEMA and 10 yeah. that we did ourselves, but. I'll be able to let you know. Because if we know that, at least that's, you know, that's in his budget. Those mm -hmm. are things that we can right. do in early summer. Well, and once she uh, quantifies it, I'm actually going to move that expense out of the general fund and right. into the FEMA expense. Okay. But she was in the process of doing it. There's a formula to figure out how much. And I just didn't know if there was, because we installed some culverts mm -hmm. that had washed out too. So I didn't know no, if part of that was those we, or. No, all those that we bought from, we bought our culverts from Bethel Mills. They gave okay. us state pricing. Those all were coded so to that the didn't FEMA line. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know the number yet for gravel, um, okay. and until Jessica comes up with an amount, I won't. So there, it looks like there's, it's favorable that we'll get something back. At yeah, that. yeah. And then some clarifications on. Uh, where did I see it here? So under the debt services, um, we have the, the debt refinancing item, and then there's the long-term debt. For says, town hall? It says long-term debt town hall. Oh, that looks like a coding error. And, yeah, well. Yeah, I'll look. So I guess I just didn't understand no, what, I didn't what that it. was and, or where that money's, you know. Okay. Is that, I guess I didn't. Is some of that money supposed to be on the line item above it? It might be. That, that makes it 100% or, yeah, it definitely or are we looks way like over on uh, our debt financing somehow? Yeah, no, that's, I'll look, I don't know. Because uh, my first guess was that we had paid um, just the interest on debt financing and had another payment due, but I don't know. You're right, it could be in there. I'll have to look at the detail. So I will. So I don't know. I don't know. That. That's good have to look at the detail. And then the last question I had was under water. Mm -hmm. Because water right now is a little tricky because we had costs associated with the yep. work to be mm -hmm. done with the water bond that's showing up in here. So, mm -hmm. um, well, not just costs, but there's been some revenues that sit too, right? Right, because you'll see the grant revenue up above mm -hmm. is when, what we've requisitioned for. Right. And um, I have some more so I guess I have two more slips on my desk that I need to submit. And there's a couple things that I submitted that we haven't received money for mm -hmm. yet. Like when we dove the tank and paid that cost to have the tank inspected, um, the initial payment to um, Paul Giuliani for the bond. When I submitted that the first time, the lady rejected those as payment out of the bond until the engineer weighed in. And so okay. she said that when I resubmitted my requisition, and I have two more from Alder Janelli to submit on my desk, she said she would pick them up then. So that's why they're such a big. So I would assume that the, the biggest line item is the one that says engineering charges. Yep. yep. So I, I would assume that probably all of that was associated with the uh, water bond. All of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. if we take that out, then. Yeah, I don't think that we had any engineering that wasn't bond related. So if we take that out, then we're we're in the forty some odd percent. Yeah. So we're we're tracking good. Then. Exactly, and we're also and, then, um, and and the same thing with legal services. That six hundred bucks we'll get back. And if we take out the grant revenue, we're so we're mm -hmm. we're we're doing well then. Yep, okay. and there's some permits like the construction permit and a couple others mm -hmm. that I'm not sure will come out of there that will end up eating, but that's in the permit line. Okay. So, but I'll make a note to look at the bond. Right. That, <clears throat> know. that my computer, I can't tell you what the detail says. So. Okay. Any other questions in regards to the budget? Report or anything else? I asked Oscar for some reports for the budget, but I didn't hear back from him. So we'll have to make a note to try to get him to um, submit constable reports next time. Did he end up getting with you after I spoke to him? Because it just so happened to me we got out of here and I literally oh, bumped yeah, into I, him like 20 me, minutes later. I saw him oh, for okay. about two That minutes. night. So yeah, I had he told sent, him. Okay. He sent me an email, but. Um, I'll, I'm going to email him the time. We need to 
I emailed him, actually, I haven't heard back from you. I want a time to set up to meet with him this week, and I haven't heard. Yeah, I think we kind of need to nail, nail some things down. Yes, now. we do. I agree. Do we have to uh, make a motion to accept yes, we do. Andrew Delaney's? I think it's nice to. That way it reflects in the minutes. So if someone goes back later, then they can take a look and kind of see when he served from start to finish. And I think it's always and nice. And if we reject it, then he has to continue on. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just think it's nice if you accept it. You can uh, try. Well, Andrew, we decided to reject your proposal <laughs> today. I think if you accept it, yeah. you regret it. And he signed yet for another three years. That's <laughs> nice. Just went and voted on it? Yeah. Yeah, majority. So I would um, entertain a motion to accept Andrew Delaney's from the Planning Commission's uh, letter of resignation. And I didn't have an effective date. Mm -hmm. I know, I kind of was thinking it was that instant. <laughs> when he so was writing it. Except it pending uh, three years from now? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be determined? Yeah. Um, I, I think it was that date. So I just didn't know if like, he played <laughs> on. He didn't say. I'm not sure if I'll see him there Wednesday, but I kind of doubt it. OK. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. And do we need to do anything in regards to the Conservation Commission? I don't think so. She's on. She has based. Is it a resignation or is it just a leave of absence? Just leave of absence. Okay. She's on maternity leave. Or something. Gotcha. And under any other business, we had the Recreation Department in regards to the trail funding. Yeah, Thatcher. So we. Yep. Everybody exchanged emails today about that, and I haven't heard back from Thatcher. One okay. of the options for him was to lessen his request um, for the grant, So, but I haven't heard back from him. So I told him what I would do is come to the select board and ask the select board to earmark 2,000 of the existing dollars in the fund for trails for this grant match. Mm -hmm. um, so is that on top of the 5,000, or, or is that in lieu of the 5,000? or? On top of. So they'd be using the 5000 <laughs> that they had talked about last meeting or the <clears throat> meeting before that. Uh -huh. And then and then they're looking at another 2000 to go for this grant match. Yes, because he calculated this match wrong. I think he didn't, he subtracted the in-kind when he should have added it in and based it on that. I'm trying to remember no. in his I email. I, he's been the one in charge of all of this. Yeah. yeah. So it's really, it's not um, reducing the... Appropriations, just earmarking that. I mean, that additional money, if he needs it, um, for that purpose, because nobody can spend capital money without select board approval. Right. So. I mean, again, I I know that we usually approve the spending, but I mean, like you said before, mm -hmm. you know, it's up to the recreation committee to manage the plan. So if the plan requires an extra two thousand of their money to be used towards mm -hmm. that, then then I'm fine with that. I don't know how the other rest of the board members feel, but probably just comes out of their yeah yeah it comes out of general fund for yeah you know, lack of a better term mm -hmm. yeah just come. so I I I I don't know if you need a motion now because it's not 100 percent or I'll just make a note that we'll just say that the um, I mean usually when you're talking about grant like that we we kind of give a verbal approval right because you normally do we just i think by consensus you can agree that they can earmark two thousand of the money for that yep and then um so what we're talking about grant funding there was there was the energy committee was remember we, we still have what we have seven thousand we do yeah match and, and did i hear that that's not going to happen now or? no it's still going to happen what's it's not going to happen, happen okay. is the car charging situation okay so the car charging one that we were gonna have to come up with like twelve hundred dollars I think for the car right charging. but then for we sure. would have had the whole maintenance on us right. we had so to that's gone to charge away. for electricity <clears throat> currently that's not moving forward because I guess GMP is not doing those type of grants anymore for currently well they're gonna and install 22 of them out here by the end of state here next year so yeah so it's not so then it doesn't even seem feasible that we would even need to put one in Bethel if there's gonna be some okay. down there I mean it just takes up parking and we don't know what the maintenance is gonna be because the contract ends up and then we're stuck with it that worries me mm -hmm. um, but no so the only thing left in the budget is the money for the, um, the planning study or 
Better connections, correct? Better connections, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. <clears throat> and we did find out, too, I put the money in the budget for Aldrich and Elliott. Um, I got an estimate from them, not necessarily they do the work, but to do the um, water, the stormwater on Avon and Livery. To, but I actually ended up just getting something from Peter at Two Rivers, and then I talked to Lady of the State, and we're actually going to get in their package, so we may end up with some free engineering out of that. So okay. I'm going to leave the money in there, though, because we'll need it for something else. But. <laughs> Anything else to come before the board? So I have the language if you want it for the executive session. So go ahead. So you would need a motion to go into executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, or evaluation of an employee per one VSA. Um, but I don't have the rest of it. I guess where's the 32, whatever. It must be in the minutes it got cut out. But per um, one VSA is fine. I can docker it up okay. later. Because there is a section. session to approve the employment or hire. What, They're just going to discuss. Just if you write the time and discuss the employment, who made the motion, I'll put in the wording for you. Okay, great. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Give that one a call. All right. <laughs> approve select voting minutes. Oh. First. Yeah, no You'll have to do it when you come out. Oh, yep. <laughs> well, we can't, can't exit ex executive session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Looking at the, the list of all the bills.